Hi, it's Luke from thepagesprinted.com and I'm back with another book review. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about this one. Uh, it's called Little Nothing by Marissa Silver uh, and it's out this month. It's out in March 2017. So at a glance, uh, it's got some cracking reviews already on the uh, back uh, by people like the Washington Post, LA Times, the Huffington Post, uh, and by Lauren Groff, the author of Fates and Furies, which I was a, a huge fan of, and I would definitely recommend reading. Uh, it calls it a pitch black allegory, which is perfect for fans of Angela Carter and Franz Kafka. I've read a lot of Kafka's work, and I'm a huge, huge Angela Carter fan, so anything that even gets close to living up to what she did, I am all for. The author, Marissa Silva, has written a fair few other books. Um, she's based in LA and has been nominated for the O. Henry Award, uh, as well as being on the LA Times Book Prize finalist list, uh, and she has been on the New York Times Notable Book List and the LA Times Best Book of the Year list. So uh, apparently she's relatively well known, but not someone I'd heard of until this arrived in the post. So what's it about? The blurb sets it out as follows. In an unnamed country at the beginning of the last century, a child called Pavla is born. Conceived in part by gypsy tonics and archaic prescriptions, her arrival stuns the world. But can a hunted woman survive in an unforgiving world? And what role will love play in all its uncanny disguises? So I think um, on the back page it mentions that this is a blend of fable and folklore, and I think that's very true indeed. Um, it's a very dark, very dark fairy story uh, that goes back, I think, to the kind of roots of fairy tales. So we're talking about the original Cinderella tale where, you know, the ugly sisters end up cutting their toes off and getting their eyes pecked out by birds. Um, and that kind of dark, angry fairy story. Uh, and this has that, really. There's, there's a lot of anger and a lot of passion. Um, but it's mixed in with a fantastic story that really tells the tale of three characters um, as they move through the world and grow up. It's set in a war-torn uh, Eastern European slash Russian country, um, which is depicted well. You never really know what's going on in the country as a whole, um, but you do get to know kind of through the reactions of the people. There seems to be a relatively never ending war, uh, and it's a very, very poor place to live as well. So initially, you're introduced to the young girl, Pavla. Um, she is born to very poor parents. Her father is a plumber. Um, and her mother stays at home. Um, she kind of grows up in this quite different family. Her family, t her father takes her to work a lot. Uh, her mother doesn't show her a great deal of affection until she's older. She grows up to be very, very beautiful, but also very, very small. Uh, so her parents obviously worry about that and worry about how she'll be able to find a man when she's older. Uh, so they take her to a variety of different doctors one of whom ends up uh, doing something to her so awful that uh, it kind of changes her completely. And that's really where the story goes from there. When she's in the doctor's, she meets a man um, who is the doctor's assistant. Uh, and the two of them go off together for a while. Uh, their story is then split up and Danilo, the name of the young boy, um, goes off on kind of adventures of his own to a certain extent. When he's off on his own, he meets a young boy called Marcus, uh, and Danilo and Marcus's stories kind of go in tandem from there. Um, but they do eventually meet up uh, with, they kind of join together with the story of Pavla and how she's changed and what she goes through. So it's gripping, it's very, very gripping, uh, and the characters are all written as such, but it's not the kind of book where you're constantly trying to get back to that character who you loved. Um, they're all brilliant. They're all really, really good, really well drawn, uh, really deftly drawn, so you kind of constantly root for them and want them to do well. All of the supporting characters as well uh, are brilliantly kind of brought to life. Um, at times they go to a freak show and they go to a prison, um, and all the characters there, even if you only glimpse them briefly, are so well realised that they could kind of step off the page, which I think is a, a mark of a very talented author. So, in short, uh, it is a passionate and angry tale that is 
kind of wrapped up well in fantastic storytelling, beautiful prose and incredibly strong characters. Uh, it's a book I would recommend for adults and probably young adults from about 15 up. Um, the kind of anger in it is, oh, it can make it a little bit draining to read actually because it's it, it's so angry but it's it's a very justified anger talking about, um, basically talking about how women in history and today um, are really told of what they should be doing when they're older, of what their expectations should be uh, in society. And it's of what happens when you try to force a woman into a place she doesn't want to be, um, and what will happen when she kind of truly connects with her inner being uh, and unleashes that on those around her. So as a result, it is um, quite dark and there is some kind of explicit imagery there. I mean, there is some body horror there that I think links in quite well to the Kafka mention on the back. Um, so I certainly wouldn't recommend it for anyone under the age of maybe 13 or 14, but I definitely think uh, teenagers, and especially teenage girls, would enjoy it um, in its anger and the way it goes against the grain of those kind of Disney films, which, you know, take the fairy tales and often have them end with the princess marrying the man and everything being hunky-dory. I know they haven't really done that in recent years, but certainly going back to Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, Snow White, etc. Uh, it kind of rails against that in a very clever and very strong way. Uh, so well worth a read. I would give it 4.5 out of 5. Um, I'm not sure if the cover will look like this when it's published, but I will try and put a picture of uh, what the final cover will look like up, because I believe it should be out now. Um, it's out in March 2017, so it's, if it's not out right now, it'll be out within the next week or two. Um, if you want to follow the author, you can find her on Instagram as Marissa Silver or on Twitter as Marissa Lee Silver. Uh, but yeah, definitely worth a read. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll be back later in the week with another review. See ya.